Joining us right now, a man who's accomplished it all in the wrestling industry. Ladies and gentlemen, WWE superstar, Drew McIntyre. What's happening? How are we? What's going on? How's everything going? Oh, it's excellent. I've been talking about WWE for about three hours now, which sounds to people like, oh my goodness, that sounds like a lot of work. No, what my buddies are doing back home, digging ditches, that's hard work. I'm talking about WWE. I'm talking about Drew McIntyre. This is fun as far as I'm concerned. Now, I have to ask you. You have been world champion. What's that like? Are steaks juicier? Is ice cream sweeter? What's it like being the champion? And you've held multiple belts. Uh, I mean, I can tell you about every other title, you know, Intercontinental titles, NXT titles, tag team championships, uh, Irish champions, Evolve champions, Dragon Gate USA champions, Impact Wrestling champion. Now you're just Google. showing off. You're letting us know all the, <laughs> all the gold has been around no, the place. No, no, no. There's way more than that. I'm just going to cut myself off there. <laughs> I can tell you about all those ones, how they felt. But for being world champion, WWE champion, because it was such a unique time that I held the championship uh, when there was no fans there initially in the building, when I won the title from Brock Lesnar, when I regained the title from Randy Orton, the virtual fans were there. Uh, which was awesome. 300 days as champion, but I've never experienced it in front of live fans. I've never had the chance uh, to carry the title around with me on the road. I always took it from home to television, which was a drivable distance in Florida, and drove back home. So when I win it for the third time in front of fans, I will let you know how juicy those steaks are, how sweet everything tastes, how awesome life is when I actually get to walk out in front of people and hold up that title or go on the television shows and hold up that title. You know, going through like TSA or something, just having it on under your clothes and they're giving you the wand. It's like, oh, by the way, it's the championship belt. I'm the world champ. Oh, yeah. That's why, like, the only time I call it a belt, because uh, sometimes, you know, in our industry, we prefer to call it a title or a championship. A belt holds up your pants. But for me, I will happily wear that to hold up my pants and call it a belt. It's like, Drew, it's a belt. It holds up your pants. I say, yes, I always wear it as a belt because I'm so proud to be champion. <laughs> It's uh, if your buddy has a wedding or something, it's like, oh, you have a, your belt on? Yes. This big gold one right around my yeah, waist. At all times. At all times. You, I'm not going to shop about it. It was my life's work. Did you wear it to friends and family's houses? Just go around like, oh, why don't you get the champ a cold drink over here? You know, have that belt uh, on your shoulder? I wish. I wish. <laughs> Just because of the nature of the times, I didn't get to see uh, much friends or especially family when I was champion. But uh, the wife got to be harassed constantly with me in the championship. And you know, she was never the biggest wrestling fan. She watches it now. She'll watch me especially, but you know, she never heard the end of it. Uh, took it to bed all the time. She eventually got jealous, kicked it out of bed, felt bad for it, <laughs> to give it its own bedroom, its own bed to sleep in every night because they kicked so, out of our bed. So is this the childhood dream? Did you grow up playing other sports? Were you in your backyard with your buddies wrestling? Did you always want to be a WWE superstar? Yeah, this is all I wanted to do uh, since I was six I told my parents, this is the goal. This is what I'm going to pull off. I'll be in WWE. I started at 15, uh, training, wrestling professionally, 16 part-time. Was signed by WWE at 21. The only ever sport I played to any high level was soccer, like football, where I'm from, the biggest sport in the world outside of America. And I played till I was 16. I'd been wrestling for a year. And my last game, I remember I got a yellow card for a bad challenge of my opponent. Fair enough. It was a yellow card. And... Uh, the second challenge where I got a red card, which means you're sent out of the game. Um, one of my opponents kicked the ball around me. I say opponents, one of the other players kicked the ball around me and went to run around the other side. And because I was so much bigger and taller than everybody at the time, he ran into my shoulder and knocked himself unconscious. I didn't knock him unconscious. He ran into my shoulder and uh, he was just there unconscious. I got a red card. I was sent off. I was very upset. I took my shirt off, threw it at the referee. I uh, tried to fight the full-grown man referee at 16. It took my manager, the other team's manager, and a few of the players and parents to drag me off the pitch because I was trying to, <laughs> to drop the referee. And I decided at that moment maybe I should you were focus, made for this, it. Yeah, focus this on anger and aggression into rest. <laughs> you were made for it. See, I told my parents I was going to be a WWE superstar too, broke a bunch of fingers in the backyard, and they said, you, you, you don't have the chops. It's not for you. Yeah, it's not I broke you. a couple of things when I was younger, and I think I broke my brother's foot with a choke slam on the sofa. <laughs> when we're kids, there's a reason we say yep. don't try this at home. Uh, <laughs> we did, and broke my brother's foot because of it. Now, you, you did train and everything. Do you have advice for younger people who want to get into wrestling, or anyone in general, any age, if they want to start, what would you tell them to do? First of all, I'd say it's never too late, because a lot of people come at me, and they're like, oh, I'm in my mid-30s, I'm 40 or whatever. I've just left it too late. Well, it's never too late. It's on you. It's how much work you put in. 
uh, is what you get out no matter uh, where you are in life, how young you are. If you're really young, I say get that education. That was a big thing for me. Uh, make sure I got my degree from university, something to fall back on. But it doesn't matter where you're at in life. If you want it enough, put the work in, do the research, find a reputable school with a reputable trainer that's produced quality students. There's a lot of crap out there that'll just take your money and train you the wrong way. Then you're going to have bad habits and you're going to have to get retrained or you're going to hurt your opponent or hurt yourself. So get the right skill, learn the right way, put the work in, get the reps in with every show you're doing. Do as many shows as you can. Again, quality shows, not places where you're going to get hurt for a substandard opponent. And look across the landscape of wrestling. Look at all the big companies that are on television now, all the different characters. How am I going to stand out? What's going to make me different? What's my character going to be? Oh, I'm a good high flyer. I do some sweet flips. Cool. Do you do them better than Pack or Ricochet? Probably not. So maybe don't say that's my whole thing. I'm just going to flip. And then if you hurt your knee, what are you after that? If yeah. that was all you were, like think of the character, think what's going to make you stand out. And no matter what shape or size you are, it doesn't matter so much anymore. You don't have to be like a Drew McIntyre, 6'5", 270, looking the way I look. It just helps We've, that you're, you know, like chiseled from marble. You know, just that's doing not, that whole that's, thing. It's it, not it, a it's bad a thing. Bit of advantage. It, it turns heads when you're walking down the street, which which helps because we do look for superstar qualities, which is turning a head when someone goes down the street. But you, I have no guys that are like five foot six or whatever, and they just have a certain presence about them, a certain something about them. They'll do the exact the same thing. You turn your head, you're drawn to them. You don't know why. They've just got a certain uh, presence about them. As you're a larger than life guy, it's a lot easier to cause that. But whatever it is for you, no matter what shape, size you are, figure it out. You've seen so many characters, especially over the past few years, especially in the different shows that aren't the biggest, that aren't in the best shape. They're just very good at their character, very good at what they do in the ring. Now, when you figure out your moves, right, is there a referee? Are you in a bar fight or something? You're just like, pow, Claymore, this is how I figured it out. You know, or is it one of those things you kind of go through it, you test a couple things out, say this would look cool. This seems devastating. How does how does the move set work? And there's a few that I've thought this would look cool and I've tried um, with opponents willing to take them, like my reverse Alabama slam um, that I do where the opponent's upside down, down my back. And traditionally, you would have their legs around your shoulders. They're all the way down your back and you pull their legs, which rewinds them around into their yeah. back very fast. I switched it the other way around. So I do it and they fly right onto their face. So I had that in my head, thought it was possible. I've been doing it for about 14 years now. And for the Claymore, that came about by accident. You know, back in the day, I was in a group called 3MB with Jinder Mahal, Heath Slater. We were playing an 80s rock band, tight leather pants. During a match, they were so tight, I ran to deliver a kick to my opponent's face, realized the crotch was going to split. I'm Scottish, possible no underwear, live television, millions of people across the world. As that foot went up and it occurred to me, oh, no, I'm going to split my crotch, I kicked the other leg up. Hit my opponent, knocked myself silly. And when I got backstage, one of the agents said, if you can figure out how to do this move without hurting yourself, you've got a winner. And sure enough, that was the Claymore. I developed it years later. It beat Brock Lesnar, it beat Randy Orton. It won me world titles. So in conclusion, tight leather pants equals world titles. There it is. There it is. Now you do have a match coming up, WrestleMania, with Happy Baron Corbin between us. I think you got him. I think you're going to, you're really going to take it to him. I think he knows that too. That's why he keeps running away every single week. <laughs> it's not that big of a secret. <laughs> no, no. I think everybody, including Carbon, knows I'm coming for him. I'm going to embarrass him. And I've been telling him every single week, I've got my match. It was announced a couple of weeks ago. I thought I was going to have to, you know, pay off some people, do some deals under the table to get this match. Carbon tried to break my neck at the start of the year. He brought this on himself. But I was given the match, so all I've been doing ever since then is tormenting him, playing mind games, letting him know that I could take you out right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till WrestleMania. I'm going to wait till all the eyes in the world are watching WrestleMania to 100,000 people are in the stadium watching how I'm going to embarrass you. And the only difficult question is, do I beat him quick or do I draw it out and take draw a it long out. time? Draw it out. Make him suffer. Yeah, as punishing as possible. Yeah. Bret Hart, the Vince McMahon, uncomfortable, long beating. Like That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> After WrestleMania, you're coming to our backyard. You'll be in Trenton, May 7th, WWE Live. There's a pre-sale code, WWE VIP. What can we expect to see at this show? Expect to see the fallout of WrestleMania. You'll check out WrestleMania. You'll see what's going on. You'll see the huge matches. And then the weeks after, it's going to be bubbling over. Things will be escalating to the next level. So you're going to be seeing everybody still in top shape at the peak of their top feuds. And uh, all of our top superstars from both brands, which is a cool thing as well. It's not just Raw. It's not just SmackDown. Um, you'll have a mix of both brands, of all of our top superstars. 
if you know, you know, if you don't, we'll get something for everybody from the youngest kid to the, I won't say the oldest adult, the youngest at heart. Uh, 40% of our audience is female. It's not just for guys. The females and women are showcased um, sometimes better than the guys because quite frankly, some of them are better than most of the guys. Say, that understands why, you know, some guys wear the tights. If there's 40% women in the audience, I'd be doing that too. Sorry. Oh yeah, well, I, I try. I try to play it to everybody, make sure everybody's happy. So I'll make sure tight tights, tight tights on. <laughs> tight tights will be on that night. Uh, but yeah, there's something like I say, something for everybody. We're a PG rated show, so you can bring um, your kids, you can bring anybody, and more importantly, if you don't know, you haven't experienced WWE live, get down yourself. There's no television cameras there at this particular taping. We'll be uh, we're such an interactive product. Instead of playing down the camera to the millions at home, we'll be back and forth with the live audience all night. You'll find yourself captivated, wrapped up in the show, and afterwards you'll be like, "Oh wow, I didn't think I'd get so wrapped up in that." But you will, because that's what WWE awesome. does. Absolutely awesome, dude. Drew McIntyre, appreciate you taking the time. We'll oh, thank you, you May seventh. We'll see you at WrestleMania. Really give them the oh. Th- th- oh. Yes. Yeah, I need to warm up for a while before that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. We appreciate seeing you. We appreciate talking to you. Best of luck. And send our best to Big E, too. He's in our thoughts and prayers. Oh, well, for sure. I'll definitely talk to him this week. So he'll appreciate that. Thank you, brother. We'll All see right, you great. again. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.